Hello, boyo, and welcome back to I Can Fix Him, the movie. Hello, AYU students. Coming in real quick to remind you that it is currently November 1st. Don't look at your calendars. Don't look at your phone. It's November 1st. Keep that in mind when you're watching the video. Don't think otherwise. Enjoy the rest of your school day. G goodbye. You ever pop one of dad's special gummies and once it starts to kick in, you stumble upon a movie that at one time was your favorite Disney Channel original and you swear up and down that it's a good movie so you decide to put it on and then you realize it's one of the most complicated plots of 2005? Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Spooky season is still upon us. Halloween feels like a time that comes and goes all too quick, but I will never forget the iconic nights of staying up past midnight and eating exclusively Skittles and Almond Joys, while I would tune into an endless cycle of beyond belief, fact or fiction, and Halloween Town. But one movie did break this cycle and it cemented itself in my seven-year-old brain. And that movie was Now You See It. Starring one of the girls from Cowbells and an angsty boy named Danny. With a 63% on Rotten Tomatoes and one epic poster, this was the magic mystery with some jump scares Disney teen drama. Hey Tracy, why did that take you 15 years to get that out? Just wondering. Director Dwayne Dunham had my TV in a chokehold, dropping absolute heaters like Halloween Town, parts of Factor Fiction Beyond Belief, parts of the Star Wars Clone Wars show, The 13th Year, Double Teamed, the list goes on, but none of them have the spice that this one has. The movie opens up with our main girl boss reading what feels like a theater class monologue while simultaneously showing a PowerPoint of the program that we have not yet seen. She's talking about this mythical being named Danny Sinclair, and she says, What I'm about to show you was never ever meant to be seen. Like, girl, what are you about to show us? Cut to some old dude hands who do a sick card spread like hey. butter. While we get into the main idea of the film, which is to have the first TV show in history to be fully produced by kids, I think? I don't know, I told you, it's a confusing movie. But there is one catch to this. Not all of you will remain. So unfortunately, most of you are gonna be executed on site. She goes on to explain how this is a reality show where kid magicians are competing for something, top dog of magic, I guess. The teacher, whomst I do not know the name of, ask one simple question, what is the rule to making good TV? Make sure they spell your name right in the credits. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and you are? Allison Miller. Right. I think the most important rule of good television is to always keep your camera rolling. Excellent. I couldn't have said it better myself. Actually, you did. I remembered it from a quote you gave in an interview with TV Weekly. This is one of the many times that we learn that Allison is, uh, she's a bit of a dork. But before we meet the other main character, we are introduced to the world-renowned magician and host of this not very specific reality show, Mystic Max. He comes out shuffling a deck of cards and does absolutely nothing with them, confirming my theory that all magicians carry a full deck of cards in their ass cheeks per the magician's code of conduct. Max starts talking about how they put up this poster with a secret hidden message in it to direct people to the entry site, which, side note, I remember this scene taking like 10 minutes and Allison having some convoluted response, but she responds with like three sentences and didn't really make a big deal of it, so if anyone remembers this, am I having like one of those uh, Mandalorian effects? What was it called? Mandela effect, whatever it is. But then everyone responds like, Man, I hate this girl. She found the message and she's dumb and annoying. Miss McAllister divided everyone into groups with one kid producer, Allison, one camera person, Cedric, and an adult mentor who in this case is named Paul. They are sent off to find the best magician for their region, giving us yet another iconic Disney montage. Not the dog. Okay, now, be prepared to be astounded as I show you the card you just picked. Ta-da! Basically, I could describe my contestants in two words. Impressively pathetic. You can say that again. Luckily, we have one more magician to see, and this is what they pull up to. I'm not sure if it was intended, but the Sinclair parents are really creepy. He's been very, very anxious to meet you people. Uh, please come in. 
Kind of off-putting. We go upstairs to see Danny blowing up one of the biggest balloons I've ever seen, and he gets so spooked that he stops. Everybody does their hellos, and Danny starts to do his trick. Shit, looking like a buffoon, similar to the kids from the montage from before. He says a dove was supposed to fly out. Didn't happen. Pause. What kind of dove was gonna be in that big balloon you were blowing up? Like, is that a colossal dove? He says, just one more chance, please. After a bunch more, one more times, Allison politely says, hey, do you wanna maybe do a different trick? You know, maybe you want to try a different trick. No, I can do this, all right? I can do this. You need any help? You want an assistant? I mean, we could always try a different camera. I'm going to do it, all right? You just got to back off and give me another chance. Yeah, so Danny sucks, but this means a lot to him, so he's got to do it. Why? No idea, but that's the way it is. We have two main characters, and one of them I already don't like at all. This is going to be a great movie. After what looks like a hundred or so failed attempts, they decide to call it quits and dip. They get to the car, they open up the back, and a bunch of doves fly out. Tell me you're rolling! I'm rolling, I got it, I got it! Cedric, you rock! So they think Danny did this because he was looking out of the window doing a duck face. Clear signs of a magician. They run to show Max the tape because these were ancient times and they were using tapes, while this asswipe accuses them of cheating. Bring that Danny kid must have worked the whole thing out ahead of time. Cedric says, no he didn't. Max then asks adult mentor, Paul, what he thinks in which he says Danny is the real deal. Allison and Danny move forward and then proceed to my second biggest nightmare, which is being stuck on a tram with a bunch of teenage magicians. This guy named Brandon does a fun little trick called jump where she picks a card, puts it back, that card jumps. But Danny's response to this is the douchiest way he could respond to it, and he does a classic hold my beer moment. Well, he's 16, more like a hold my root beer, or my cream soda, I don't know. All right, you got it? I got it. All right. Is that your car? That's my car. How'd you do that? <gasps> that was awesome. What? The what? How do you respond to that? If I saw that with my real eyeballs, I thought I met Jesus. We then pull up to this Walmart version of Hogwarts, which then precedes my first biggest nightmare, a building full of adults who are magicians. Everyone is dismissed and heads out to their rooms, which cue Danny being annoyed by Allison for talking to him about the show that he signed up to be on. Right now I'm thinking that this is my room. So? So I'll see you tomorrow. Wait a minute, we're not done talking here. One of us is. You're blocking my door. So? So can we continue this tomorrow, please? I have things I need to take care of. What kind of things? None of your business. Yeah, what kind of things do you need to do? <laughs> also, I still can't figure out why he does this weird, like, smile while she's hitting the door. Like he's having some sadistic, like, that he's liking her being annoying. I don't know. Allison is facing the reality that her contestant or magician counterpart whatever is not going to be of any assistance because the because magician but she is determined to make this work because to her Danny sinclair was my favorite kind of challenge just one more puzzle begging to be solved first day in the mansion the three magicians have their first challenge which is to create an illusion using only basketball rope broom aquarium 10 gallon and a bed sheet all the producers are talking to their contestants and doing tv things while danny is just sitting there thinking about how much he does not like allison uh anything you'd like to hop up and show us anything you want to try i mean probably futile but um charming first attempt you'd care to perform <laughs> Have I mentioned you're making it hard for me to concentrate? So this whole argument goes on for a little too long, but then this absolute gem pops up. One hundred have tried, but only three have survived. <laughs> and now the stakes get even higher. Three kids, seven days, only one winner. Why is he standing like that? Only one will win. <laughs> Fuck. Do you believe in magic by the girl who's in the movie? Starts playing while they're doing their tricks, but you know. 
for copyright purposes. Do you believe in ma- No, I'm not gonna do it. Zoe floats a ball with a sheet. Cool. Max gave it a seven. But we all know what's going on here. I'm here to see Danny's elaborate trick. So, what are you gonna do? Huh? So it seems like he's gonna go with good old reliable, making something disappear. They're gonna disappear. <laughs> right. You don't stand a snowball's chance and you know where I'm pulling that off. I don't stand a what? I don't a snow a snowball? A snowball in my ass? I don't stand a snowball in my ass's chance of making that disappear. <laughs> well, I'll show you. What the fuck? Hunter, catch. <laughs> I bet that snow was actually in his ass. Makes a whole big deal about butt snow was not one of the five approved items and blah, blah, blah. So Danny gets a three. I don't know what the scoring is for. It never comes up again. So don't think it matters, but he only got a three. Last up is Brandon and Brandon needs an assistant. Max says, just use Danny. He's on the stage already. Brandon says, hold up the sheet. To which Danny says, you know, technically I'm not one of your five approved items. Just raise the sheet, okay? Don't be a freak. So Danny does what any normal person would do and makes him disappear. Ah! Oh, there he is. So of course all this confusing stuff makes Danny storm off and Allison is chasing him, which makes Danny hate her even more for trying to communicate. I can't be your friend if you don't give me something to work with, you know? Girl, I don't think he wants to be your friend in the slightest. At night, Allison and Cedric go to look at the stage to see where Danny had the secret door for the snowballs and vanishing act, running into close friends Brandon and doglick haircut guy, and they hash it out for a bit, ending with none other than adult mentor Paul just sort of watching this happen like a vampire. New day, new challenge. Same Danny. All three contestants get assigned a famous magician that they have to study and replicate their best trick. They all start doing whatever it is kid magicians do, but Danny's busy hitting the books. Allison finds him not studying for his trick in the competition, but looking for information on secret tunnels and hidden chambers within the nerd man, uh, sorry, the magic mansion. If you come across this movie in Disney+, Plus, this is the scene that they use as a trailer, but I think it gives you absolutely no information but that's sick looking book art, that's for sure. All three of them start looking through the mansion without the map that he had. They find random doors in this long tunnel, which honestly, as a kid, this, uh, this was my Blair Witch Project. This freaked me out a little bit. They find this symbol and problem solving queen herself speaks Latin, so. They get right in there. They turn the dial and we are in, in a different area now. Danny breaks into this huge solid gold vault, which if this magic stuff doesn't work out, I think he could find alternative ways to make an income. Cedric at this point is getting more claustrophobic and fed up, and he spins this dial, which sends them back to the library. Can someone please explain to me what just happened? I don't know, but things just keep getting stranger by the second. Indeed they are, Danny. Now for the tricks. Zoe takes a bunch of bunnies out of a hat, which is sort of fucked up if you think about it for too long. Who put all those bunnies in that little hat? Brandon does some 80 synth pop number with this light bulb. It's cringy. It's stupid looking. Danny is stupid. Still trying to make stuff disappear now. Are they gonna do that for every challenge? May I present to you Houdini's original vanishing, vanishing elephant. So it's safe to say that nothing disappeared, but a mechanical bull did appear. So everyone looks concerned because they think Brandon was hurt because he's a wimpy little boy. There are a ton of these super dramatic zoom ins, kind of like Kubrick does all the time. This one takes the cake because th this is a very, very funny zoom. Okay. Why does he look so concerned? He made a bull appear. That's fucking sick. Everyone is freaking out about it, and this guy accused Danny of having actual magic powers. There's a lot of bizarre things we can't explain, like ESP, mind readers. And Donald Trump's hair. What? What did you say, Cedric? How did that slip into the script? Danny bugs out and he goes, yeah, okay, I'm a wizard, because everything he says is like this. Fine. All right, Hunter's right. Huh? 
I don't know how I did it. I don't understand anything about any of this. So Hunter's like, yeah, I got his ass. But enter Max, saying that Danny is doing one of the oldest tricks in the book, lying. To prove that Danny is legit, Max offers to have a skeptic society come and have a trial, whether Danny is truly magical or if he's just a damn good magician. And to be noted, Max is the president of this door club, the magician, skeptic, skeptic club, group of skeptics. It is time for Danny to prove if he does or does not have magic powers, but he is hiding away in the secret bank under the mansion. Allison finds him and they have this heart to heart, but Danny makes sure to talk down to her just a little bit, just to assert his dominance. I need to explain something to you, but you gotta promise me that you will just sit there quietly and just let me get through it. So he decides to break his walls down for two seconds and tell Allison about his weird magic encounters with a weird skateboard that he saw in a window as a kid and magically was just writing. He blacked out and stole a skateboard. It's just a working theory, but that's what I think happened. But the other story was a little more interesting. A couple of months later, this jerk at school was picking on me, making fun of my hair or my pants or whatever, and I was wishing that he would just get lost. And then he was gone. Did you kill that kid? They found him like 10 feet up in an old oak tree, hanging by a belt loop. <sighs> From what I'm understanding, it could have gone much worse for that bully. She really does her best to try and be a good friend, which I'm not sure why, but she says, I can't make friends because I'm too weird and you're magic. So we're the same. For real though, she's just being nice and trying to get Danny to do the trial thing. And so he does the trial thing. They ask a bunch of questions. Danny answers accordingly. Max looks like he's slaying the house down. Then it's time for the demonstration. And Danny does his damn thing. He starts floating like Kirby in the new Kirby game, but Max shuts that shit down and says the chair is doing all the work. Then you hear these sparkles in the background, meaning that someone's doing magic somewhere. Oh, it, oh, he's storming off. Uh -oh. So now this is the big fight, the fight of fights. Basically, she's annoyed because it's like, you lied to me. And he's like, I didn't lie. But then Danny says that he thinks Max is out to get him. Max is the one who doesn't want my abilities revealed. He's the one who rigged the chair. Can not tell me why? I don't know. Maybe there's some reason why he's out to get me. Allison says, that's it. Now her and Danny are strictly work partners and not friends. Which keep in mind, at no point were they friends in the movie. Cedric swoops in and says they should be getting footage of Danny for the show instead of drawing faces on him because Danny is at least a good magician, if not a wizard. After rewatching the footage, Allison believes Danny now, but she has to get to him quick because Danny does not like to stay in one location for too long. She checks his room, nothing. The library, mm-mm. The vault, nope. While looking down a random hallway, she hears Max talking to Danny and decides to go into this confessional type vent to eavesdrop. Max is explaining that he knows about Danny's powers and that he himself is one of the true wizards and has been trying to protect him this whole time. In true Nathan Fielder mentality, Max created this entire show just to lure the one other sorcerer out. And my golly, it worked. Danny is still trying to process everything, but to prove that he just needs more control, Max challenges Danny to a medieval version of magic rock'em sock'em. This was a scene that I remember being iconic and epic and really good looking, and I vastly overestimated what this looks like. Max gives Danny a ring that helps him control his magic while the show is going on, so no more unexpected uh, occurrences happen, and then he sends him away. But then Paul comes in. Yeah, adult mentor Paul. Creepy vampire watching the kids at night, Paul. Ew. Insert Disney villain explaining the exact way to ruin their plan now. Max plans to use the ring to take Danny's powers just like he did with his mentor and creator of the Magic Mansion, Antonio De Milo. Allison got this all on tape and she needs to get to Danny immediately so she can get that ring off of him. Danny and whoever this stunt double is are having a blast just juggling their day away while Allison has a show to run. She tries to explain to Danny that she needs to take the ring off of him because Max wants him under complete control. Danny is in complete disbelief. So Allison says, let's show Miss McAllister the tape that I recorded to prove what I'm talking about. I have it all here. 
here on this tape. She has no idea what she's talking yes, about. Yes, I do. It's all right here. Then perhaps what we ought to do is watch this tape of yours, huh? Girl, now be fucking for real. What are you gonna do to this man who is a literal wizard? And if it isn't painfully obvious, the wizard man erased the tape the second he touched the camera. I think he could have done it without doing it, but he made it personal. So they decide to boot her off the show because they think that she is overworked. Allison is packed up and walking out when she runs into Danny who was like, now that I haven't been around you as much, I'm the happiest I've been in years. How was I supposed to believe you that the guy who created an entire show nationwide and will be airing on primetime television just to find me was out to get me. And then she hits him with a, look at this, your last great trick. Managing to make your only ally disappear, huh? Where are you getting this idea that you're friends? I don't, I don't get it. Why do you want to be his friend so bad? He sucks. Allison felt that figuring out why Max wanted Danny was a huge puzzle she could solve. And she did in like two seconds. Max's mentor, Antonio DeMilo, died from a prop that he had worked with thousands of times, crushing his head, but funny enough, he was wearing the same ring that Danny is currently wearing right now. So Max wants to take Danny's powers, and kill him. Damn, Disney, this feels like a zero to 100 situation. Allison knows this information now, so she has to get that ugly ass ring off of Danny's hands, so she sneaks back on set in a magic box. Danny is stressing out and asking Max, how's he gonna do his final trick if the ring stops his powers? And Max says, I'm just gonna help you cheat and win. Relax. Show's getting started. Allison is out of the box and looking for Danny. Max is just popping up on stage. Why is he always standing? Just... So the show starts with sequence Crisis Boy and his stupid little light show, which I don't think could even be classified as magic. It's more of a light juggle. Then he takes a big stick out of a bag of dog poo. Then he just starts throwing cards in the audience. And that's literally it. We see nothing of Zoe's trick, by the way, so it must have sucked just as much as Brandon's. Allison is spotted and ratted out by Vanilla Pudding Boy, but she is able to get Danny just before he goes on. She explains how Demilo had the same ring on and died, and how Max is literally trying to kill him, but he doesn't want to because he doesn't want to feel the way he used to. So there are actually two lines that they overdub, and I still don't know what they are. I won't do it. A faith. I gotta go, all right. Anyone who can read lips, if you can comment down below what he actually said, cause I'm just curious. Danny is up now and ew, his parents are back. Max welcomes him on stage with a weirdly long handshake and a long little check to see if the ring with a 19 inch rim is still on his hand. Oh yes, thank God. His trick is going to be lifting a thousand pound weight over his head. He gives it one good tug and the crowd is immediately unforgiving and starts booing him. Whoa. Danny is super aware that he needs to get that ring off of his hand. By the way, nice shoes. Max gets on stage and starts orchestrating a sort of story with the audience, making that look intentional and get Danny ready for another trick. Allison is back in the box and delivered by the legend himself, Cedric. Max decides to involve himself in this next trick by killing another kid. But that was just a transition trick. But here to save the day, Allison gets the ring off of Danny, and now time for the battle between two wizards on stage. Max makes his first move by making Danny fly. Allison screams out, Danny, the ring! The ring! Use the ring on Max! Danny takes the ring out of his pocket while spinning like a ceiling fan, and says, now it's my move, Max! Starts yelling, and diving directly towards him, perfectly throws the ring on Max's finger, and then they explode. This is all in like two minutes, by the way. Like, what the fuck just happened? Luckily, Danny is alive, and that puff of smoke, I guess, was just a... Uh... Max's ashes. So Allison's back in her final monologue moment. She tells us that Max must have made it out alive because all the copies of the show had disappeared, but then suddenly reappeared in her room. Once Danny heard that Max was still out there, he went into hiding, which I don't know how a 16 year old boy can go into hiding, like under your bed, are you gonna go to like a different parking lot? And I guess he's not hiding well enough because then this happens. 
So maybe I do know where he is. <laughs> how did you get there? You know, I still don't know how you do that. Uh, That's a horrible hat. Secrets of his tricks. <laughs> Leave it magic. What? Are they dating? Friends? Forced to work on this movie together? The world may never know. But that's it. Roll credits. Play the PowerPoint of the movie that you just watched. That's it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's just it. Insanity, crazy monologue, PowerPoint. There are so many things that I kept finding every time I would rewatch this movie, but quite frankly, I'm never gonna watch this again because it made my brain hurt because I still don't know if I said the right plot. What were some of your favorite spooky movies or even your favorite Disney Channel original? Comment down below. Like the video and remember, I might love you. Bye.